brothers and sisters, dear friends, dear protector, we are assembled here because of you. Thank you. Uh, this is a great pleasure that we are here and that we can praise God and that we can witness an important event in your life and that we all can be reminded of the covenant that we all have made or intend to make with the Lord. To open this service, special solemn service yeah. of baptism, we will uh, sing the hymn number 532, Ring the Bells of Heaven. 532, if you have a baptismal bulletin, you can find the text of the hymn in the bulletin, 532. to read for the opening from the epistle of Romans chapter 6 and I'd like to read a few verses where Apostle Paul was using the baptism as a symbol of a very important work, spiritual work that takes place in every true Christian. Now what does he say? Verse 3 and on. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more, that has no more dominion over him. If you pay close attention to these words, you can learn a very important spiritual truth. Baptism symbolizes dying to the old man that we are all born with, our nature, fallen human nature, which produces sin and leads into death. But now we put this body of sin in the grave, in the water. This water symbolizes death. And as Jesus was put to death, he took our sins and went into the grave 
he was crucified, and then he resurrected to new life. And what happens now, that death has no power over Jesus Christ because oh, he overcame death. He overcame sin. So likewise, a Christian who is buried in the likeness of Christ's death, he is resurrected to new life, and the death has no dominion or control over him. Now, Christ expressed this truth beautifully, and also about the resurrection in John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall in the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So, if you have a corn or seed, you can keep it and preserve it, and it will stay alone. But if you put it in the ground, what will happen? It will die. But what will happen? New life will come, and more abundant life. So this is the spiritual truth. When we die to self, we are raised with Jesus Christ to a new life. And this is life of the spirit, not life of the flesh. So this is very important, sister, for you, for each one of us, to be reminded what baptism stands for. And let me read one more verse. When Jesus was about to start his public mission and ministry, he came to the water where John the Baptist was baptizing. And we read in Matthew 3, verses 13 to 15. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and you come to me. Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So, brethren, why Jesus was going to be baptized? He did not have any sin. He did not need forgiveness of sins. But why he was baptized? You know, I discovered something as I studied life of Jesus. Christ's life was life of constant surrender to the will of the Father. He had a will as we have a will, and he was crucified that every day and doing the Father's will. So even Christ, without sin, he went into the watering grave and he made a commitment, I live for my Father, I do not live for myself, I do not do my own will, I do not speak my own words, I do only what the Father commands me to do. So this is a perfect example of how a Christian should live. And we are very happy that at this time, Sister Esther, you have decided to follow Jesus and to die to self and to renew your covenant and to live for him, to die for you and to resurrect to new life. It is our wish and prayer that God will be with you and that he will bless you as you rise to new life. This is my wish and prayer for Sister Esther and for all of us. Amen. 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 To confirm this wish, we will all kneel down in a prayer. And yes, we will down. Yeah, we will kneel down. You can stand, and Brother Dorin, Pastor Dorin, will offer a prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come here today to witness a new birth. We come here beside the water where Sister Esther will make this covenant with you in front of many angels that are invisible to our eyes. And those witnesses, friends, brothers and sisters that came today to witness, to support, to pray for Sister Esther and that we can one day meet you on the clouds of glory. Lord, we see in this symbol is not just a form, but we see it as when the old man dies and we come to the newness of life Amen. in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray at this moment before we enter the water that you would bless Sister Esther tremendously in her personal life. You would bless her with health, with strength, and not the least with faith and grace that is so important for her salvation and our salvation as well. We entrust everything in your hands. 
and please to the lobster the life after the darkness as well. You promised you will give us the Holy Spirit wherever your Spirit will lead us. We, uh, we want to be according to your will. In Jesus' name we ask and pray and we ask you to be with us that you are directly involved in this darkness. Amen. Amen. Brethren, at this time, as Pastor Dorian will go with the pastor in the water, we will sing the hymn, uh, which is here, I believe, also in the bulletin, Redeem. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it that one? Redeem, I like it. Okay. Yes. Yes. And when they, Brother Dorian will raise the hand, we will stop singing. So, 413, we can start singing. Children ready to see? our children who have prepared a song for this occasion, so we ask them to present this song. Can you come closer to us, please? Can you tell us the title of that song? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Wonderful.
That's a beautiful song. We thank you so much. We have more. Okay. Much. We are really blessed by the wonderful song that you have presented. And we are also very pleased to be in this beautiful environment on this property for which we are very thankful for hospitality. But before we close the service, Pastor Marian Serbo will have a few concluding words and prayers. What a joy today. We don't see, like Brother uh, Pastor Dorin said, the angels here present. And the Lord is rejoicing. The whole heaven is rejoicing uh, together with us. Well, the Apostle John said, what we see, what we hear, what we handle, this we are proclaiming to you. And what they see? Well, we have in the uh, Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 1, verse 14, they said that the, and the Word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as one of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When he heard that, the first time, when our Jesus Christ came out of the water, it was heard the, the, the voice from the heaven, this is my beloved Son, and the, the only begotten Son, and this is uh, the, the, the Son that I send to you. Well, we beheld the glory, we beheld his example, we were looking to his life. As it was mentioned before, he, he didn't need to, to have the baptism. But here he said he did not receive bat baptism as a confession of guilt on his account. Yes, for our example, today we are following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Later on, Apostle Paul said in uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, uh, 4 to 8. After that kindness and, and love of God, our Savior to our men appeared not by work of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will now affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Sister Esther, you are now again starting a new journey from this point. You came following the Lord. Now we have another level of your consecration, dedication to the Lord. Now Jesus Christ, after baptism, he tried so hard to work for our salvation, to, to, to meet the tempter, the devil, and to just defeat. You will, will have from now on maybe more temptation, and the devil will not stay sleeping and let you alone. But the Lord promised that he will give you more power from now. And according with the word is, man was brought according to the favor of God by the washing of re regeneration. This is uh, when Christ came out of the water and represented that all who repent of transgression of the law of God receive purification, cleansing through the work of the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit will take from now on 
uh, position of you. He will, will lead you, will, uh, will show you the way that you may go from now on. We are just, uh, at this point, witnessing this event, and we would like to assure you that you will be in our prayers, in your own hearts. We would like to support you and to be together in the heavenly place one day. May the Lord bless you and be with you. Amen. 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 So we have a closing hymn, which is we are now in a happy, cheerful mood. This is appropriate hymn. You may remain standing, but we will kneel down and Pastor Marian Sherbo will lead us in a prayer. Holy Father, which art in heaven, Almighty God and our Creator, we thank Thee for this opportunity to be here witnessing a new dedication, a new surrender to Your hands, to Your heart as a Father. We thank Thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Savior, that through His love He attracted all of us here, and He is attracting us all the time through the throne of grace. We have no other place that we may look to and to get help. Please be merciful upon us, Lord, and today receive our petition, our prayer, 
that you may be with all of us, but especially with Sister Esther. Give her power, strength, that she may grow in the faith and follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all her heart in the power that you gave her. Amen. Lord, bless our hearts that we are here present and our children, that we may, may surrender all of us, our hearts to you Amen. and be united in the holy faith and be part of the, the saints, the, the celestial uh, armies with the heavenly angels in the heavenly place. We would like to be there. We miss home. We miss you, Father. And we like that very soon to, to come and take us home. We thank thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, for everything. Amen. 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 So, brethren, we ask for your attention for a few moments as Pastor Dorin Burka will make some few closing remarks. We witnessed a, an amazing thing today. We call it baptism, water baptism. I'm so thankful uh, for the Lord granting us this opportunity and for this wonderful day, for the sunshine. I personally, I was a little bit worried when I looked forecast last week and I had some communication, but the Lord blessed us beyond even our expectation. He always does, doesn't he? And this is wonderful. Now, not the least, I would like to say a big thank you from our church community of Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement to the couple of Bill and Dale Clay. We are very, um, uh, we are very uh, thankful and we acknowledge your hospitality to allow you use your property and the lake for this honorable cause. And I hope you are blessed anyway. This will bring you the more blessings as we follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So as a token of thanks, we'll have uh, Sister Lillian. This is a little uh, gift from us for your family and uh, loved ones from our church community. So brother, I think we had a wonderful service here at the lake. Um, the program will follow as, uh, as follows. We will need a few minutes to change. Um, with this um, pandemic now, we can't come and have photos close. Maybe we could have at some distance, but probably enough photos were taken. And um, we will, um, if somebody would like to take with Sister Esther, we can have this few minutes. And, um, uh, food will mo not be served. If this were normal times, we would do it differently. And, uh, but we have some pre-packed, and everyone who is present here, we would like to uh, that you would uh, get a, a little pre-packed of uh, some uh, finger food and a little bit of desserts. And you can also grab a bottle of water or um, a juice, what is going to be offered. So please uh, don't leave any... Um, anything here on the property. We are uh, thankful for allowing us. We don't want to leave any uh, garbage or whatsoever. And um, our service of fellowship will follow at the church in Puslinch. So um, those that can, you are all invited, especially the members from the Puslinch church and all of you. And um, I think these are all the announcements. Thank you once again for coming and uh, for witnessing this joyful event that we had today. And we thank the young musicians for yes. the contribution. Yes. Absolutely. And the children for beautiful mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Yes. So you can change now? Yes. yes. Or if you want to take a photo now? Yeah, if somebody would like a photo now, probably we can take this up. Yes, we're gonna take you, you took for yourself? And yes. Or you just, I don't know, maybe other the people who took it. Oh. So take whatever you can yeah, find. Please. Take from there. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello.
So, brethren, I'd like to welcome all of you as we uh, continue our service today. And for uh, the opening, I'd like you to take your seats, and we will have an instrumental. Um, the hymn need is What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. So we will listen to the music. here this evening with this wonderful occasion that we come to uh, fellowship a new member of your body on this earth and as we come also to commemorate uh, from the sacraments of the Lord's Supper. Please be with us during this service and bless Sister Esther especially as she has uh, made this covenant with you today and that she can carry on and be a true example and that we can support each other for your kingdom for the meanwhile as we have still on this earth we ask you to be with us and bless the words which are going to be spoken and bless all the guests and the brethren that, that are gathered with this occasion here uh, in the church I ask and invite you in the name of Jesus Amen, Amen. So let me just introduce the order of service. Usually, this is our custom. After we have the baptism, we would have the fellowship service. And this is what we wanted to do. I know it was a little bit of driving. We were planning for five. We are half an hour later. Uh, but uh, we plan to have the first part, the service of fellowship of Sister Esther. And then we will conclude this part of the service and then we'll carry on uh, for uh, the church members uh, the uh, Lord's Supper and um, the rest can stay, they are welcome, there is no uh, issue whatsoever uh, with the second part of the program. We intend to have it a pretty short program, but uh, let us uh, rejoice and let us praise the Lord for everything he has done for us today and uh, we hope that we will have more moments like we had today and uh, that we can praise the Lord here and once in eternity. At this moment uh, we have Brother Walter here and uh, with us today so um, uh, he will have a speech, a few words of encouragement and uh, uh, inspiration especially for Sister Esther and for all of us. Please. Brethren, uh, this will be a very short speech. We are a family here. Amen. 
uh, we are having uh, communion service as well here. And Jesus brought his disciples, those who are closest with him in the upper room. And we are happy today to have one more member who will join us. Uh, I'd like to just share with you a few thoughts that are at my heart when we are in moments like this. You see, there are different organizations, different associations, clubs, churches, and people become members. They join, they enroll, <coughs> paying membership fee or doing whatsoever. But with the church, this is a little bit different. It's more than just formal accession of becoming a member. To become truly a member of the church of God, we have to be born of the water and of the spirit. Spirit, spirit that's right. So I'd like to just remind you when Christ was talking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus said, well, we know you are a great teacher from God. Christ said, you have to be born again. And he said, how? And in John 3, 5, it says, very short, Jesus answered, verily, verily. When he repeated twice, it means very important. I send to thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Sister Esther, I am just repeating the same what I mentioned in the water. We are raised in the grave, but resurrected by the Spirit mm -hmm. to new life. And unless someone is born again by the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, let me mention something briefly. I spoke a little bit at the water with Sister Maria, who is here with us. And she related to me briefly her experience and her experience with you. And I am fully convinced this is not just ordinary human business. This is more than we can, you know, <laughs> humanly do. This is something extraordinary. She told me how you came first time here to this church. And, uh, and somehow you were impressed, right, to stay. You know, Jesus was talking the parable about the uh, seed falling on different grounds. I will not read the whole parable. But you know the story. The sower is coming and throwing the seed, and one seed fell into the... By the way, mm -hmm. and what happened? The birds came and picked up the seed, right? And another part fell on the stony ground. And what happened? The seed on the stony ground, it quickly sprang up, but the heat came, the sun, and died. Another fell down uh, in the thorns. And what happened? Thorns grew and choked. But then, other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. He who has, who has ears to hear, let him hear. It is my impression when the word of God, when the seed fell in your heart, it fell on the good ground. And we see the results of that seed right now today. So, brethren, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is not work of human power. But I'd like to a little bit share with you a few more thoughts from Apostle Paul, from Romans chapter 8. Now, when Apostle Paul laid out the great doctrine of righteousness by faith, justification by faith, we are peace, we have peace with God, we are reconciled. Now, look what he says about the Spirit. How do you and how I become a member of the Church of God? Romans 8, verse 11. <clears throat> but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So if God who raised Jesus by the Spirit from the dead lives in you, he will give you new life. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Now, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Who? Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Many people come to church and are baptized, but are not led by the Spirit of God. 
I must tell you, that's a sad truth. Great ev evangelical preacher and pastor, Tory, he said, in the churches I have pastored, 80-90% people were not saved. He was a, you know, evangelical. <laughs> he recognized man, many people are not saved. They don't have a saving relationship with God. They are not born of the Spirit of God. It's a very serious business. So you see, to become a member of the Church of God in a true sense, we have to be born of the Spirit. For verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So Christ is saying here, look, when you are baptized, when you become a member of the body, when you are you receive the Spirit of God, and by that Spirit you call Father how? Daddy. That is in Aramaic, Abba. Daddy. Very intimate, very close. Now you're part of the family. And look what he says. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So God is giving witness to you that you are the child of God. And then let me, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So Holy Spirit is doing what? Holy Spirit is praying. When you pray, Holy Spirit is praying mm -hmm. and expressing. We, we studied about Jacob and Jacob's prayer in that night. Interceding. So Christ is interceding in heavenly sanctuary for you, but the Holy Spirit is interceding in your heart, in your soul. That is the truth of the Bible. And then we... No, here, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, look, look at this, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And whom he who did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and to whom he justified, then he also glorified. Mm -hmm. I will not read further. I just wish to say that if the Holy Spirit is not present in our new birth, in our baptism, we are not truly children of God. But I am convinced that you were called by the true Holy God, that Holy Spirit led you step by step to this truth, and that you may this step today under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I trust that this Spirit of God will abide with you, give you comfort, guidance, help you to have victory, to not live in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And that one day, that Spirit will seal you you know, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit for eternal life. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus comes, he will recognize you and call your name and invite you. Mm -hmm. So at this time, you have become a member of this congregation, of this church, of the family of God. But I want to assure you that there is more than human eyes can see. Mm -hmm. And I wish that this is true. And I pray that this is true. And I'm convinced that this is true. Uh, so, Sister Esther, uh, we will help you. We will assist you. We will uh, be available to you whenever you need us. Don't hesitate to contact. You have a local pastor. You have other pastors who participated today. You have brothers and sisters here who will be by your side and help you and assist you in whatever you need. And I can see that you will be a useful member of this congregation because you are an energetic and spiritually minded person. And I'm sure that you will bring a blessing to this congregation. So it's our great privilege and pleasure 
to, at this time, welcome you into the Church Fellowship. And Brother Dorin uh, will continue with the program here. But I, as a pastor, wish to just share with you this truth, that the Spirit of God is what makes a difference. Jesus says, the Spirit, the words that I speak to you, that are spirit and life. So you see, the Word of God and the Spirit of God bring life to you. They have helped you so far, and I'm sure that God will continue to guide you until the very end. This is my vision prayer for you and for all of us who are here present today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, in continuation, uh, we'd like to have one item before the next part of the program. So we have uh, a poem. I think it's um, whatever. It was called. Oh, all of them. Yeah, okay. Uh, please, children. If Jesus came to our house to spend a day or two, if he came, came to unexpectedly, I wonder what you would do. Oh, I know you would give your nicest rooms to such an honor guest, and all the food you would serve to him would be to would be the very best. And you would keep assuring him you're glad to have him there, that serving him in your home is joy beyond compare. But when you saw him coming, would you meet him at the door? with arms outstretched and welcome to your heavenly visitor? Or would you have to change your clothes before you let him in? Or hide some magazines and put the Bible where they've been? Would you turn off the radio and hope he hadn't heard and wish you hadn't uttered the last loud hasty word? Would you hide your worldly music and put some hymn books out? Could you let Jesus rock right in, or would you rush about? I wonder if the Savior spent a day or two with you. Would you go right on doing the things you always do? Would you keep right on saying the things you always say? Would life for you continue as it does from day to day? Would your family conversation keep up at usually pace? And would you find it hard each meal to say a table grace? Would you sing the songs you always sing or read the books you always read? And let him know the things on which your mind and spirit feed. Would you take Jesus you everywhere you'd plan to go? Or would you maybe change your plans just a day or so? Mm -hmm. Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on? Would you be glad to have him stay meet or your very closest friend your or would you hope they stay away until his visit ends? Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on? Or would you side with great relief 
when he at last was gone. It might be interesting to know the things that you would do. If Jesus came in person to spend the day with you. Amen. Thank you, children. Otherwise, in normal times, they would sing a lot and we would sing a lot. But we are thankful for every opportunity. We can praise the Lord and even in this poem. So, brethren, before we just go to uh, fellowship, Sister Esther, I'd like to share also a few words, because today this is a joyful moment. Uh, we don't want to stay too long, but I feel impressed that we, um, we, we can look at the Word of God as well as Brother Walter was mentioning, you know, the importance on what we build and how we go from here on. And um, my point I'd like to make, first of all, uh, we had a beautiful day so far. And uh, the moment we start speaking about the Baptist, you remember, we said, we want to have a beautiful day. Yes. Did God answer to our prayer? Yes, he did. So th this is amazing. Um, we'd like to see more occasions like this. You know, We'd like to see every year, a few times a year. And I believe as we approach the end of days, we will see more and more. There is a big harvest. Now, the, the thing, and especially for you, Sister Hester, I'd like to share a few words. And for all of us, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, the Lord Jesus, he tells his disciples an important thing for what they have to understand and to pay attention. So this is the Gospel of Matthew 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. When we become church members, maybe some of us, we became church members many years ago. We were baptized, maybe not so long ago. But once we become church members, uh, God has placed on us, we don't want to be just believers. Because many times we say, well, how many believers we have? We say, we believe in the second coming of Christ. We believe in the three angels' messages. <clears throat> we have many other beliefs which are, which are so important and so solemn for our time. But I think what Christ says and when he chose the disciples and he sent them out. He didn't want just believers because there is a difference to be a believer and to be a disciple. He wants to see you and you and you and me not as believers, but as disciples. What is the difference between a believer and a disciple? Well, let's read what, what Apostle Paul is trying to uh, communicate to the church in Thessalonica. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and, and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. So the believers or the church in Thessalonica had a mission. And Apostle Paul says that from you, this word was supposed to go further away. And, and that light went um, not only in, Mas in Macedonia and Achaia, but also uh, in every place, says Apostle Paul. Does our faith, does our discipleship reflect the same commission as Apostle Paul is commending and recommending to the church in Thessalonica. How about the church in Puslinch today? 
We can say we have so many members, and now we are happy there is one more member, one addition, and I believe there will be more. But at the same time, what is the goal? Because if I just accept it and I say I am a believer in Christ and I just hid this truth for myself, not let it shine, what worth it is? Yeah, I may say that this is for the salvation of my soul, but that's not the purpose. You know, we are, we are saved to save. We are saved to save, or we are rescued to save others. That's the main purpose. Otherwise, we would not be here. I hope you agree with, not with me, this is what the Bible is teaching. So, even for Christ's ministry, he, he started his ministry not with making believers, but with making disciples. Why was that? Because Christ, the teacher, the, great, the greatest teacher that ever lived, he knew what he needed. He needed disciples. He needed discipleship, that they would go on and they would make other disciples. Well, when you think about discipleship, what does it mean to be a disciple? Well, to be a disciple is quite, quite different <clears throat> than just to read the Bible, attend church services, sing hymns, return tithe. It's, it's something more. This is associated with a believer. But a disciple, besides belief, also follows Jesus and commits himself or him, herself to make new disciples. So now since the Lord has showed you and showed us his amazing love, now in our turn, we have to reflect it. We have to pass it on. Because if we just stop here, there is no future. When we speak about the future, is making new disciples, carrying on this good work. In, um, in the book Acts of the Apostles, page 134, uh, one paragraph tells us, In his wisdom the Lord brings those who are seeking for truth into touch with fellow beings who know the truth. It is the plan of heaven that those who have received light shall impart it to those in darkness. Do we agree with this statement? Mm -hmm. I believe all of us agree, right? Mm -hmm. So if we, if we just cover it for ourselves, we say we have a nice church, we can have uh, nice services, we can have nice camp meetings, outreaches, maybe sometimes baptismal services. But if we do not have this burden to share this light with the other people that are in darkness, we are missing the whole point. We are missing our purpose on this earth and our commission. Volume 9, page 129. In the home circle at your neighbor's fireside, at the bedside of the sick, in a quiet way, you may read the scriptures and speak a word for Jesus and the truth. When I was a child, I had a dream that, you know, when I will grow up, I can go somewhere far and bring the good news. But the Lord doesn't ask doesn't ask us to go far. He is asking me and you to be faithful and to be disciples wherever we are. First of all, in our families that are not enlightened by the truth. In the circle of friends that we have made so far, and maybe we will have new friends where the friends will change once we made a step for Christ. At the workplace, this is another opportunity. We should not look for going necessarily to Africa, to Asia, mm -hmm. to some further lands, you know, to rescue and bring the good news. Yeah, there is a need for missionaries to go there. But I think for us, first of all, this is the first missionary field. And now we have this, um, how to say, we have this commission that we have to go on and make new disciples. In the book Christian Service, one sentence says it very well. The very first impulse of a renewed heart 
is to bring others also to the Savior. This is the first thing what you want to do. There is nothing else. There is no more. There is no greater joy, there is nothing else than just sharing it with other people. A couple more things and I will conclude. We all remember how Christ called his disciples, or how he made disciples. When he chose his disciples, he didn't go to Jerusalem to the high priest. He didn't go to Sanhedrin and say, well, can you give me a list of the best scholars here? or PhDs, you know, who is the best here in town, in Jerusalem, or in the whole nation of Israel? And I believe they had smart people. They had theologians. They had people that knew Torah and, and the books of the Old Testament, probably some of them by heart. Christ didn't do any of that. We know how, we ch how he chose and whom he chose, right? It's very interesting because Christ chose one person and that person, like, let's say, let's take Andrew. Andrew, he had a sibling, he had a brother. What is his brother's name? Simon. Later he became Peter. So Christ chose Andrew, then Andrew goes to Peter. Christ looks after Philip, Philip, Philip goes to his friend Nathaniel, right? So he goes and he, he tells him about Christ. This is the way how we are making disciples, right? Actually, God makes them, but he uses us as his um, tools or as, as best vessels. With the calling of John and Andrew and Simon, of Philip and Nathaniel, began the foundation of the Christian church. John directed two of his disciples to Christ. Then one of these, Andrew, found his brother and called him to the Savior. Philip was then called and he went in search of Nathaniel. These examples should teach us the importance of personal effort, of making direct appeals to our kindred, friends, and neighbors. In the very fam family, the neighborhood, the tower where we live, there is work for us to do as missionaries for Christ. You know, I'm thinking about my neighborhood. How many people know that I believe in the soon coming of Christ? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a burden on my heart. And I'm just thinking many days, you know, when I think, well, how shall we do? Well, now we have an excuse. It's COVID. You can't approach people close. But before, what excuses do we have, did we have before? Mm -hmm. Oh, people are busy. Yes, they are busy. Oh, oh we, I don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> but the inspiration says, in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm in our households. We need disciples. Why do we need disciples? Once again, um, because a believer can be just a spectator, would come to church faithfully, would judge the sermon, it was good, it was bad. We go back, we are faithful in our tithes and offerings, we can support in something. But that is not enough. Christ wants us disciples. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the last text in the Gospel of Matthew 9, 36 to 38. But when he saw the multitude, multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then save, save he unto his disciples. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Mm -hmm. This is our greatest need. When you look at the harvest, when you look at the field that is around us mm -hmm. at Canada, how much many more, uh, how many more laborers do we need? And we can't do it on our own. We need to ask the Lord of the harvest that he would send more laborers. And actually, many times we expect the local preacher, minister, pastor to, to accomplish this great work. But that is not how it goes. Christ organized the disciples. And then they were supposed to make other disciples. And they would make other disciples and go around the globe to do what? 
to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I think what we did today and what we witnessed is just the first step in, in the progress because a believer, yeah, today I can say, yeah, I am a believer, but a disciple, it's something that is formed not instantaneously. Mm -hmm. You know how long it took for Christ to prepare his disciples for the ministry? And they are not ready yet. Mm -hmm. You know what they did even after three years and a half. They needed even more time. So in the process of discipleship, it takes a longer period of time. It's a process. But the good news is that Christ is the one that will polish, that will instruct, and that will guide us. Mm -hmm. This is my desire, first and foremost today for you, Sister Esther, that you would be blessed and you would become one of those disciples. Not just a believer. Mm -hmm. Remember this. Mm -hmm. Not just a believer, but a true disciple of Christ. And through the example and what God has blessed us, we can all unitedly, uh, as, a, as an united front, continue and make other disciples. Amen. Amen. So after many blessings, we are getting rain. This is a double blessing, but we are inside now. So uh, at this moment, we uh, will have a service of fellowship. Um, so Sister Esther, mm -hmm. if you will Shall we all rise? Yes. Stand. So we witnessed the baptism of Sister Esther today, and now we are going to um, have the church fellowship. And um, today, Sister Esther, I extend the right hand of the church fellowship. From this day on, you are a member of the church of God. May God bless you. Okay. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our conference, this can you confidence, I extend to the right hand of church fellowship of our entire conference. You're members of the local church and part of our field conference, and you are the child of God, and may the Holy Spirit be with you and guide you until the end of your life. And once we get better, in heaven. Is yes, it my desire? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So, and what we may get again. So uh, here is the Baptist certificate as a memory for you Thank for you. this day. And uh, we'll have Sister Lillian with a little gift as well. Thank you. On behalf of the Cousin Church, I'd like to welcome you and I'll give you a hug. Social yeah. distancing. I'm sorry that we can't hug, but um, I'd, I'd like to just present something on behalf of our church. To welcome you and yes. God bless, and we're all here to support you. Yeah. I know you'll be here to support us as well. So, so that's all I have. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. As we promised, we, uh, we have this wonderful service uh, in the afternoon. And now as we come to a closure of, the, of this part of the service, yes, before we have the final hymn, we, uh, we usually uh, give the opportunity uh, to uh, the new member to say a few words. And uh, we had yesterday, but today is, um, is even more special. So Sister Esther, you may uh, come again. Sorry, I, uh, I missed this part. Uh, you want to say a few words? Uh, you can step on the front. Yeah. <coughs> I apologize for that. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say thank you to everybody because today is so special. I was telling Maria, uh, I remember when I, the, the, my first baptism wasn't like this at all. It was something so simple, I don't even remember how it was. This day, today is a day to remember. I will remember it for the rest of my life because it's so yeah. special. Thank you to everybody to make it special for me. I'm so blessed to be, to be in the house. 
and you make me so welcome, and I don't want to cry. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah, may God bless you. Amen. Amen. So I think uh, we all have memories when we got baptized and the emotions we have and uh, it's, it's, these are, these are um, uh, tears of joy and uh, uh, mixed with emotions. But I do believe that the Lord will bless Sister Esther and us together as a church family in spite from where we come from and the age and uh, uh, our background, but as a united family that we can progress and grow in grace uh, and uh, prepare for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. So at this moment, we will have the musicians and they will play uh, the final hymn, which is Joy by and by. <laughs> Sister Maria, maybe she would like to say just a couple of words. I know God has used to, and um, you have prayed a lot, and we know uh, your prayers for your children. But if you'd like to say just a few words here, um, I would give you this opportunity because uh, you are good friends with Sister Esther, and uh, maybe if you would like. I, I just want to say thank you. I don't want to go there because I got so emotional. <laughs> I understand. But I just Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why I chose the to make this connection of discipleship because I, I saw that how God used you and many other people as his disciples to look for some other disciples. And then Sister Esther on her turn, and then some other people, and we don't know even the couple that we were today on their property. We don't know much about them, we know just a little bit. We know they are nice to let us use the property and the lake. Mm -hmm. But I hope and I pray that this was a good testimony and a good example from, uh, oh, by all means. Watching, watching one who let me live with Esther, but she kept calling me back. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm anxious to see what is going to text me later. Right. You. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Maria. May God bless you and your family, your children, and um, we look forward to continue doing the same good work mm -hmm. as uh, as the Lord has uh, blessed us so far. So at this moment, uh, let us. Um, um, we will have. Yeah, we will have the uh, benediction. So let us rise and we'll have a benediction.
Let us bow our heads. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.